Hi, welcome to my latest video. Well, on this one, I'm going to show you one of my new toys. This is a Unify. I think the actual model is a 24GS Pro. And it will allow me to replace my existing core router in my network and get the system running in a, in a more effective and higher performing way. Let me start by opening this up and taking a look at it. Okay, there's a little box of some goodies in here to start off with. Let me open that up and take a look at it and see what's in here. Let's see. Oh, the, the power cord. I guess it's like a little instruction manual here. I already read through it online, but I'll double check and make sure that there's nothing new in this one. It has, of course, rack ears two rack ears that I'll put in. And then there's this box here. Let's see what we got in this. Oh, boy, they really do it fancy. I thought I saw somebody online showing the same thing. It's got the, uh, the screws for the rack ears. It's got some rubber feet, which I won't be using because I'm putting it into my network rack. And it's got some, uh, some rack screws as well. Probably the only thing I'll use here are these screws to hold the rack ears on because my, my rack has different kinds of screws that it uses. That's interesting to have that. It's a nice foam case. They really put a lot of money into that, I think. Let me take the, uh, the new router out of this case here. Oh, it's packaged well, that's for sure. Pretty solid, hard foam. So I don't think it would get damaged in shipping anytime soon. So I gotta save this in case I have to ship it anywhere, at least through the warranty period. I try to keep the boxes the best I can on this type of equipment. Especially something like this that cost me a dime, you know? It's in this nice uh, white package here. It's not cloth, it's just a plastic, white plastic. Open this guy up, and then we'll take a look at it. I'll save that in case I have to package it up again. The stickum is getting caught on the router itself. Okay, so here's the switch. It has on it 24 ports that are one gig each. But the advantage and one of the key features I was looking for is they are PoE, every one of these ports. The first 16 of which are set for PoE+, and the remaining eight ports are PoE++. So I believe that's 30 watts and then 60 watts, just rounding it out. There's also two 10 gig ports that are used for chaining it to other network equipment. I will be using those, at least one of them initially, and at some point when I've updated my rack a little bit better, there'll be a second one as well. Another piece of equipment that I'm looking at, but I'll leave that announcement for later. It has the little LCD display here. It's like a three quarter inch display. That is where you can get the switch's configuration and status as it's running. And some other uh, interesting uh, features that this particular model supports. This is a pro version. It's also referred to as the uh, Generation 2. And there's a big difference between Ubiquiti's Generation 1 or, and Generation 2, as you will see when I start showing some of the specific specifications of this device. On the back, well, there's nothing on the side. I was surprised to see there's no air vents on the sides of this at all. In the back, we have the power connector. So you connect the power up directly to this. You don't have to deal with a brick, which is always good. I'd rather do that. And I could tell that when I looked at the power connector. It is quite heavy, mainly because it has some very large power supplies built into it. Now I'm not gonna take the cover off because it actually has some thermal pads that are underneath this cover that are connected up to keep the power supply cool. Because under full load, I think this thing actually can generate 400 watts of PoE power, which is significant. I'll never be using that, and the main reason I want to go to PoE is just for future proofing. I do plan on potentially using more PoE type devices, including a Raspberry Pi or two, one of which I've already got up and running, and it's using its regular power supply. Well, I wouldn't have to do that anymore. Whenever I connect it up to this particular switch, it'll get its power through PoE. Now back here is a secondary power supply. Now this is a special thing that is done by Ubiquiti on their Gen 2 line. This is a cut connector and there's a special connector that goes up to it. And I believe it's a rack mounted power unit that uh, is meant to support Ubiquiti. I'm not sure if it's compatible with 
anything else or not. I will not be using that, at least not anytime soon. It all depends on how, how much more additional equipment I put in my rack in the future. In terms of airflow, there are fans in this. Since I don't see any vents that are obvious, these little slits here are clearly where the air is going to be coming in and possibly going out. My assumption is they're being sucked in from the front and blown out the back. That's the usual for network devices like this. And I think those are the highlights of the physical configuration of this device. The next thing I'll do is here on the table, I'll power it on and we'll see what it does. Stay till the end, of course, and you'll actually see this up and running with a PC or two. Okay, I have a network cable connected up to it. And I have the plug on the back that I haven't plugged in yet. Let me come over here and we'll take a look at this little LCD display and see what happens when I power it on. I've got something happening there. It looks like it's got a progress bar here that's going up, this blue line. So it's taking a while to boot up. Oh, the lights are coming on over here, the PoE. They went yellow and now they're going green and they're cycling a little bit. Well, it looks like it's up now. Let me give you a quick run in of the little menuing system that's on this little three quarter inch square screen. First thing I'll hit is this I for information. And as you can see, this is the assigned IP address, which happens to be given out by my DHCP server that's on my router. And since this was out of the box configured for DHCP, it grabbed one of those addresses. As you can see the little dots along the bottom, that shows you the menu screens that are available in this option. So if we scroll to the left a little bit, we see the next option, which is telling you it's using Unify as its control console. And I'll show you that a little bit later in this video. Next, they show you some status about the general activity and connections to each of the ports, how they're defined in terms of speed, for example. This one here tells you the SFP ports in particular. There's two of them, and that is where I have my current connection to my internal network. It's on one of those SFP ports. So as you can see, the green up and down arrows there, that means that we are connected full duplex through the FSP. This menu tells you the uptime. I've had it up now for a little over five hours, just letting it you know, get used to my network and the temperatures in the room here. The next one tells you the actual hardware address that's associated with this particular device, the MAC address. Here they tell you the software version. So the software version of Unify that's running on this thing is 5.59.9. etc. etc. And now we wrapped back around to the IP address. We scroll down to go back up to the main selection menu. Let's pick the ports menu, this one up in the left hand corner. We could look at ports 1 through 24 by clicking this one, or ports 25 and 26, which are the FFP Plus ports. Let's take a look at these. I don't have any of them connected. So as you can see, we have gray dots on all, both groupings of those ports, 1 to 12 and 13 to 24. If I clicked on the SFP Plus, well, as you can see, there's a white dot on the port 25, because that's where I have it connected to my local area network. Port 26 is not in use. If we click on this one here, that looks like a graph, we get statistics out of it. So we're getting the throughput that has occurred since it's been powered on. That's the first screen. Not much activity has been here. I really didn't pump any activity through it. I can actually see what my CPU utilization is and my memory utilization is taking place. I can see the current temperature in degrees centigrade and degrees Fahrenheit. That's internal temperature. I can see how much PoE I'm using, which is right now nothing. I don't have any PoE devices connected. It shows it real time. That's how it is at this instant. And now you can also look at it in the last seven days or in the last 30 days. Back to the beginning. If I pick this final one down here, it is some general system functions. Here I can adjust the brightness of this display. It's currently set as 80%, but I can scroll it up or down to whatever I want. I can actually see the fan speed. It's currently set at 47 degrees, but I can tweak up the fan to a higher percentage over here. It's still set on auto, so it'll resort back to auto once I leave it alone. And here, if I wanted to restart the entire switch, I could just click on that center button. And there we go, quick tour of the menuing system. We'll also see this online when I'm actually running the software, which is the controller for this. Well, that's pretty interesting, don't you think? This little LCD panel here that these uh, devices provide from Ubiquiti. 
you can do a lot of stuff from that, at least monitoring. There's not much you can change, you know, other than the fan speed and a few other features like that. However, if you want to manage this, you cannot use a web page. If you connect up to the IP address that this thing now has and is shown there, it will not even connect because there is no embedded web management tool on these devices from Ubiquity. Their whole concept is the idea of unifying everything, hence the name of their company. But what you can do is if you happen to buy one of their other devices, like their firewall, the Ubiquity Dream Machine, UDM or UDM Pro, it has built into it that particular network controller software. So you can then remote into that device and connect up to all the other devices that it happens to be connected to, which are running Unify software. Now there are alternatives to buying something else, and there's several different ones to choose from. I won't go through their product line on that. They also have the cloud key and a few other options that you can purchase from them. But there is software available, software that you can download to your PC. You can also outsource that and use their cloud service, whereas you're running that on the Ubiquity website. Not sure if there's a charge for that right now, but there might be. So you might want to do what I'm going to do. Download the actual application that you can load on a Windows or an Apple or a Linux type workstation and be able to manage it as long as it's connected to your local area network, be able to manage all of these devices from that workstation. So that's the next thing I'm going to cover here. I'm going to show you where to get that software, how to download it, and how to set it up. Now, I won't get into a lot of detail on it in this particular video, but there will be follow-on videos to this where we get into a lot more of that. But if you want to manage it, for example, I want to change the IP address right off the bat. I want it to match my network scheme. Well, in order to do that, I'm going to have to use that software. So let's try it. Okay, the first step in downloading the network controller software is to go to this website. And on here, you will see, of course, advertisements for some of their products that have that built in, like the uh, Dream Machine and others. But I'm going to go down here to one that says Unify, get the Unify network application, and then I'll click Download. It then asks me which type that I want for which type of operating system. I'm going to pick, for my case, Windows. It asks me to accept their licensing agreement, and now I'll download the file. So now I'll go into the folder view of this. And that is the actual installer for the Unify network application. So now we double click on this to actually run the installer installation program. It's confirming that I want to do this as an administrator. Now I'll say install. The application requires Java. So we need to install Java before we can install this one. So I'll say OK and it will exit. And now it's going to the Java installer. I can then say agree and start the free download of Java software. Java has some security risks to it, so be careful on what machine you decide to use for this. A virtual machine might actually be best if you have an environment that supports that. Clicking on that, it's installing the installer for Java. It is now complete. I will open up this file view once again, and this time I will click on the Java installer. Once again, confirming that it's okay to execute that. And now it's pretty much just taking the defaults and letting it install. Close that. And now we should be successfully installed with Java. Let me go back into the installer for the Ubiquity controller, which is still in my downloads. I, will always, I always like to use the folder view. Let me install this once again. Same warning. Now we try again with install. And now it looks like it's installing successfully. We want to start it, so I'm going to say finish with the default checkbox. It's going to take a little bit of time to initialize it, so be patient. We have to wait until this box is clickable. I'm going to say it's a private network and to allow access. It's just give me a security warning. And now it's starting the actual Unify network application. And now it's done, and we can actually click on this. It actually highlights, and if we click on this, it will run the actual application. It's giving us a warning to make sure that I am in a private network. I click Advanced, and then I can say Continue to Local Host. What do I want to call that particular controller on my network? I will just leave it at the default of Unify Network. Next, it's asking me to sign on to my Ubiquity account. So we have to have an Ubiquity account in order to use this. You'll see the link down below uh, on creating an account for Ubiquity, but I'll just go ahead and log into mine, and we'll take it from there. Do I want it to automatically back up? I'll leave that 
as highlighted like it is, so it will do that. It'll back up the configuration to my Ubiquiti account. It actually sees at this point my device that is connected. Please select a device you would like to configure. I do not want to configure it for now. I'm going to show you how to do that in the next step. I do not want to enable the uh, Wi-Fi for this, and then I will say finish. It's now loading the application. And there we go. I'm going to go into first my settings, then system, and I'm going to pick the dark mode. Very popular, and it works out better for this particular application with the colors of the fonts that they created. I'm going to apply those changes, and there we are. Now, the application is running, but it's not yet attached to my switch. So what I'll do is I come over here to this little one here, the two circles, Unify Devices. It sees my switch that I've added on the network and it indicates that it's up. So what I need to do next in order to manage it, I got to say, click to adopt. It's called adopting the device within the Ubiquiti environment. So I'll click on that. It identifies it. It has my MAC address. It has my IP address, the model, all of that. I will say adopt. It is now in the process of adopting it. Let me now come over here and check the status. It's currently updating the device. So it's going out to the internet, to the Ubiquiti site, and getting the updated information that is needed for that device. This could take a while. I'm looking at the little window, the three quarter inch window, and all the status of what was going on was being displayed. Now it's in the final stages. It actually says that it's updating the switch in that little window. Okay, now that we're in here, I'm not going to go through all the different menus. This side menu is the key to most of them. In this video, I just want to jump to particular key points. If I click anywhere on this, I can see details about the device that I just adopted. This is really the only place you're going to see statistics because we only have this one unified device on our network. So if you click on that and then you click statistics, the arrow down, it'll tell you what activity you've had in the past you know, few minutes or few days, depending on what you want to do. You have both CPU and memory capable and displayed here. And that's a good point to look at as you're uh, trying to see if this thing is working. So I would look at that. And then before we leave this, let's go to settings. A lot of nice settings here, but I want to click on system. And then we've been here before just to change it to dark mode. But I want to go down to backup. Now it's currently set to enable auto backups every so often. They'll back up into the browser that this is running in. But I want to manually download it. So if I click on here, it's actually downloading the file to this particular device. And as you can see here, I just downloaded this one. And I could take this and save it, which I suggest you do, either on some external device, a NAS, whatever, especially if you've made any changes to the configuration of the switch in this case. So be on the lookout for future videos where I show some more about using this controller and where I show more about understanding how Ubiquiti as a network functions and is configured. A key feature of the Ubiquiti USW Pro 24 PoE switch that influenced my purchase was its ability to facilitate inter-VLAN routing. In a future video, I will discuss the technical details of this feature and why it is important for my network.